Flint City Council meeting to order this October 8th, 2012. Can we have roll call, please, Janelle? Ms. Poplar? Present. Mr. Freeman? Present. Mr. Lawler? Present. Mr. Neely? Here. Mr. Sargentson? Here. Mr. Kincaid? Here. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, Ms. Brown will not be here this evening. Her daughter was transferred from Henry Ford Hospital to Hurley. And so she is up uh, with her daughter this evening. Uh, Councilman Wayhill uh, said that he would be a few minutes late. And Councilman Lloyd is at another meeting and may or may not be here. And I expect Councilman Nolden at any time. Uh, if I could get Councilman Freeman to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, please all rise. Thank you so much. Are there any additional um, special order or unfinished business, uh, Janelle? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Are there any additional communications from the mayor or other communications to be placed on file at this time? No. Okay. Now is the time set aside for the public to address the city council. I'll ask you to please just state your name, limit your comments to five minutes. Mr. Chair, yes. we got a public hearing. Um, that is correct, we do. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. We do have a public hearing this evening. Sorry about that. Not used to having public hearings. <clears throat> We have a public hearing. Do you want to read the public hearing? Or do you want me to? Huh? You want me to read it? Okay. Okay, we have a public hearing this evening. Hold on one second. An ordinance to amend Chapter 24, Housing, Article 12003, International Property Maintenance Code of the State of the City of Flint by the addition of Section 24.4, Adoption Comprehensive Rental Inspection Code. There are copies of the um, changes to the ordinance. Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Please my name is in my house. Rental inspection ordinance, that's correct, R.L. Yeah, and the man who inspected my house, he condemned it. And I've been living in that house for the next, after he condemned it, I lived there for 10 more years without even being fixed. And then I found out you, you, you fired the, uh, the inspector, or you laid him off, and his name is, oh, I can't mention no name, right? Because you said no. Don't mention his name. Don't mention now. his name. Okay, but anyway, the city of Flint know who he is. But uh, I, and I stated I want some uh, some debidians back, like you filed that lawsuit, and I ain't haven't got no debidians yet. And it's but that's what I want to put on this this hearing right there, for the record, even while the city attorney not in. In and I guess not in though. I just want to speak on that. Like Thank I forgot the stuff. I don't. Didn't forget. Thank you, R.L. Okay. Yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Um, I, I'll I'll be more than glad to give you the details if you'd like. This is the rental inspection. Just, am I reading the right thing? Is this this one little paragraph here? Just copy the first page. I'm sorry. We just copied the first. We page. just had the front page of it, but uh, the ordinance was uh, presented at the last council meeting two weeks ago, and it was available for anyone to uh, pick up and 
um, go over and read the changes, and it was also published. Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't get a copy, so I don't know Good. what it, it entails. And but if I'm understanding this little piece here, that it's changing the uh, maintenance code for the rental properties. This is for the rental ordinance in the city of Flint, and there's okay. a couple of changes that needed to be made. I can explain them to you very quickly. If you could, it, it would be, I'd be appreciated. more than glad to. In the ordinance. <clears throat> that currently is on file. There was a provision that the city may notify the, the owner of the property at the time that their rental inspection license had, had elapsed and the city was not notifying the resident or the owners. And when they came in to register their property, they were getting charged with a late fee. So now we've changed it where the city shall notify um, uh, property owners with registered rental property that their um, license is about to expire within 60 days of the date that it expires. And the other change was the inspection time from three years to five years. Okay. Okay. Now so, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you not to change the three years to five years. Okay. For the uh, excuse me. Now yeah. now I'm going to open the public hearing because I oh. give you the, okay. No no you're you're fine right there, but I want you to give your name and address for the record, and limit your comments to ten minutes, please. Thank you. Okay. Bob Johnson, thirteen oh eight Ida, Flint, Michigan. Um, as far as the the uh, two years or five years or what is it right now? Three years. And then you want to extend it to five years. Now, I've, I've come before this board and I have written to different council people about rental homes where people come to me. As you all know, people come to me like I'm the ombudsman. I'm not, but they like to come to me anyway. And which I can show you pictures of rental homes where, where they are condemned. Um, the one uh, over here on, I'm not even gonna say where, over by, the south end, um, extreme damage, extreme leaks, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Rent, there was on the wall, it was a posted, condemned, but yet the guy was still renting it out. And when we make complaints, they say, well, there's nothing we can do. Well, if there's nothing you can do in, with a three-year thing, what makes you think they're gonna do it in five years? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Over in my neighborhood, which um, I live in a, in a nice neighborhood, um, what has happened is all the, all the homes from the recent years of, of the mortgage fallout have been sold to slumlords. And I'm, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not gonna be any nicer, it's slumlords that's got them. Those homes were really nice in that area, in um, Ward 8, over off of Miller Road. And these guys that come in, they rent to whoever, they tear the house up, they kick them out, and then they turn around and they rent it out without doing any repairs again. And then when we make complaints, in which I have made complaints about the homes, nothing is ever done. I mean, we're trying to maintain our area in which um, to keep our property values up somewhat. Now, you can go over into our particular area, and I, I can speak on my area because I'm there. Um, we have several houses in which are, are just completely abandoned. They go in and they rip the houses off, but yet we get in trouble if we do anything to the house to keep people out of there. And now you're gonna say, okay, here, landlord, you can, you can, you can have a five-year license, but in that five years, he's gonna have 20, 30, 40 people in there and he's not gonna fix the stuff. And it's not all landlords. My mom and dad used to rent properties. They had one on, on York Street over on the east side. They had a couple over here on Bagol. They had them, you know, in fact, one's empty over here on Court. I mean, I understand the problems with rental properties. However, they always was there. Trust me, I was a kid, and we was at them stupid things all the time working on them. But most guys don't. I've seen these houses and people are constantly, and I would love to provide you with pictures. But these guys have their licenses and when, when you, your inspectors come out, they look at the house, they give them a list of stuff, and they just ignore it. I mean, they just ignore it. 
and then they're allowed to keep that license anyway. So what good is boosting it five years when they ain't even following the rules for two years? Now, as far as the other issue, I'm not quite sure on, but I really think that you need to get down on, on some of these landlords. Um, we had an incident where one of our landlords, um, she evicted the people every time they caused problems in the neighborhood. I mean, she was a wonderful lady. And they had a shootout in front of the house. Within a week, she had them people out of there. I don't know if she did it legally. I don't care. But she got them out of there. And most of the landlords don't even care. So I would urge you on that particular issue not to issue five years. I know, I know that some of the council people own rental, people, rental properties or their family members own rental properties, and they want to boost that to the five years. And I would urge you to think of the people in our neighborhoods. And we're trying to build the neighborhoods back up. And I think this would cause the neighborhoods to go back down, not back up. I mean, a five year is just giving them a license to let the thing run down until that last year. And then if they decide to go back in there and, and, and fix it back up, then they will. But so um, I, I would ask you not to let that part go through. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd just like to make a comment that some of the points that you made are not a part of what the ordinance is to begin with. Um, and the other issue that I would suggest that you do is go down and see the emergency manager and ask him to reinstate, reinstate the, you, we're not gonna get into right. debate, so you've already right. addressed the city council. You might wanna go down and ask the um, emergency manager to reinstate the blight enforcement officers to deal with a lot of those problems that you addressed. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening, Council. Good evening. Uh, my name is Vanita Simmons, Washington. Um, I really want, I know that you say it's not a part of the ordinance, but I've been in this city all my life. My father's the late Chester Simmons and Cynthia Simmons, and I'm watching our neighborhoods go to absolutely nothing. And listening to uh, the Council speak on this, we have rows and rows of abandoned houses that landlords don't even see anything, don't even come and look at them. They don't do anything. They're burning them up. They're breaking into our houses from the back of our houses. We can't even go to the store. And they're taking uh, the merchandise. If we don't have those uh, security locks on our doors, they're unplugging our refrigerators. They're doing some unmerciful things, and these landlords need to be held accountable or whoever the property owner is. I don't care if it's the city. I live at 213 East Pulaski. I've been there since I was five years old, and I am seeing a terrible de de deter deterioration of our community, and it needs to be addressed. We need, I'm sorry that my council person is not here because I really wanted to speak with him. I wanted them to come out, you know, if they land, if land bank owns them, board them, clean the yards up, let's get it done. But giving, from what I'm hearing, giving landlords more time to do anything with licensing, I think there should be some real checks on this. You know, I, I'm not really clear on this ordinance, I just read it, and I'm very, very upset because we have, in my neighborhood, my neighborhood is one of the older neighborhoods, and most of the families, you're talking like four generations. And we've got abandoned houses on Pulaski, one row, there's got to be eight. On Marengo, it looks like Beirut. And those landlords, or whoever owns this property, is absolutely doing absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. And we're looking to the city, or our council persons to at least you know, give us some kind of help, give us some direction, give us some guidance. If you're going to give them, if you look, if they're, they have license, from what I'm understanding, then somebody needs to really, in uh, this form, needs to check these landlords out to see if they're even uh, fit to even have a license. Because from what I'm seeing, it's absolutely, absolutely bad. And I have elderly in my neighborhood, you know, and we really, truly, want something to be done and to get done. 
You know, I want to say this, and then I'm going to back away from the podium. It's easy for us to come here and talk and talk and talk and talk. But the reason it's empty in here because nobody's doing anything. People are just beginning to believe that when you come out and you ask us for your vote, and you're going to do this, that, and a third, and it's still not getting done. We need to see some action and something to get done. And I can say this personally because I watch my father get out of his bed and see about our neighborhoods. I'm not seeing this anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing the things that we, that we voted you guys in to do, and it definitely in my neighborhood, Mr. Lloyd, I'm not seeing the things that really should be done. Come out, look. If, if you know of something that, need, that we can do about these landlords and their abandoned houses, they actually went into one of my neighbor's houses who was on vacation through the back window from Marengo Street where you've got about 11 houses that are empty, broke into her house, snatched her plumbing out, unplugged her refrigerator and her stove, and the only reason they didn't take that was because the security doors were locked. I just think that when we're talking about landlords and we're talking about licensing and we're talking about our communities, I think that we need some real action from our, our council person. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Good evening. Good evening. Um, first, I'm stumbling in the dark. This is my first city council meeting. I'm a relatively new citizen in Flint, Michigan. I've lived in five other states. Okay, first I needed a little clarity on where you said that uh, you were going to allow the landlords to have a, from a two-year deadline to a five-year deadline uh, in order to correct the problems on their property. No, that's not what I said. Oh, okay. Well, I'm asking you, yeah, you know, no. for clarity. Yeah, okay. No, what I, what I said um, earlier was that right now the ordinance penalizes, the city penalizes people that have property that they rent that is registered to be rented. Okay. They penalize them for a late fee if they don't register their property within the three-year time period. When the three-year time period expires, the city doesn't mail them a bill to let them know that their um, rental license is, has expired. Most people, when they pay their bills, they get a bill that says that they owe someone some money for paying their bill, consumer's bill, water bill. They get it on a regular basis. The city right now does not mail anyone a bill that has registered rental property, but if they register their property late, they charge them double the fee. So what we're saying in the ordinance is, is that the city shall notify you 60 days prior to your license expiring, okay? That, okay? That's the one issue. The other issue is the city has a rental registration where properties are to be inspected every three years. The city's not inspecting the properties. Any tenant that has a problem with their property, whether it's one year, two years, or three years, mm -hmm. can file a complaint with the city and then the city shall then come out and inspect the property to make the landlord correct whatever problems there are. The problems for the, the, the landlords and those, those people that own properties that they rent is that the city is charging them for a three-year inspection, but they're not inspecting their properties. Okay. And so the city, because of the dwindling resources that we have, now we are expanding that time frame from three years to five years. But that still gives the tenant, someone that's running property, if the landlord is not maintaining that property, there's a process in the ordinance where you can file a complaint and then the city shall send out an inspector to inspect that property if the property is registered as a rental. And every rental property in the city of Flint should be rent registered as a rental property. Those are the changes to the ordinance. Okay. So uh, do you hold these property owners accountable for if their tenants move out, uh, such, as, such as on my street, I have a home where they were taking the aluminum siding off while they were living there. 
So my quandary is what happens to the property uh, regardless of inspections, this, that, and the third? What happens to the property when it's empty? And um, how do you find out who owns the property? I'm looking for direction. I'm looking for an avenue of getting in touch with somebody who can make a difference in my neighborhood or in Flint in general. Because I do realize if we don't stand up for Flint, nobody's going to stand up for Flint. And I saw a city council meeting on the television. And I was very, very shocked to see even at that time it was 10 citizens here. I, I do understand on the one hand why they're not here, because they do feel helpless and hopeless and abandoned. So as a new resident, I want to make a difference in my neighborhood, in my city. So I have talked to my councilman, Nolan, and he has steered me in the direction of one project. But since uh, I found out about this meeting, I thought I'd come down here and see what you all talking, are talking about. You know, are you just talking about the problems, or are there any solutions on the table, or whatever? So uh, I guess I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know that if it's any city planner, any uh, avenue where I could be utilized as a help, that's why I'm down here. But Thanks. back uh, again, I want to go back to uh, the property on my street. Two things. First, there's a, uh, a home on my street that was profiled in the Flint Journal. There's been no resolve as to, I don't know if that was na 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 or what. Uh, very disturbing to me. The other thing is, like I said, I have three homes actually in a row. So every time I open my blinds in the morning, you know, after I say, thank you, Lord, thank you, I have to look at this. Now, I know uh, my brother says to me, Glennis, they're not going to do anything. The city is broke. OK. Well, I need somebody to tell me uh, that the city is broke downtown. Because the citizens, that's how they feel, because nothing is being accomplished. And maybe the city is broke. Like I said, I just need uh, some clarity as far as what direction should, should myself as a citizen take to become an asset in Flint, Michigan, as I was in San Diego, California, and other places that I've lived. Thank you. And I see, I'm sorry, Nolan, um, com, uh, Councilman Nolan wasn't here when I got here. Now that he's here, I will talk to him after the meeting and see if he can steer me in a positive direction. But I am like many of the citizens here in Flint. And I did graduate Flint Northwestern. I've lived in five, five states since then. So um, I just, like I said, I'm just looking for an avenue of being an asset in the community that I've come to live in once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Thank you. My name is Chris Del Maroney. I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, one of the, I'd like to respond to a couple of comments that were made. And, and one is, you know, it's unfortunate that the city is not inspecting the rental homes. Um, my concern is for the health and welfare of those who are renting the properties. And um, certainly it would, a tenant could call if there's a problem with the property they live in. But that would mean that the tenant should know if the wiring is proper, how many smoke detectors are needed in the house, carbon monoxide, is that required? They would basically have to know the building code. And I just don't see that happening. Uh, the city should be inspecting the properties. Uh, we know in today's economic uh, climate that Many homeowners, when they decide to leave the city or to move, they don't necessarily need to be leaving the city, but decide to move from their present location, they have a difficulty selling their home. And what they end up doing is quite often try selling it themselves. It will then be listed by a real estate company when they're not successful in their endeavor to sell their home. And then when the real estate company can't sell the house, they then may put it up for sale again and, you know, for sale by, by owner. And then at that point, 
you'll see the for rent sign go up and then it may become a rental property and the home should be inspected. I am sure that there are many rental homes in the city of Flint where things have been done to the homes without pulling a permit to have it done, without it being done by a licensed contractor, and without it being inspected. And I think it is possibly the role, and it should be the role of government to ensure the safety and the welfare of its citizens. I would go so far to say that every time a rental home, when someone moves out of a rental home, whether they have been there for six months or six years, it should be inspected. Because we know in today's climate, when people move out, not only do they take their belongings, they may leave some things behind, but quite often the copper goes with them the aluminum siding, the wiring. I sit on the Board of Review and we have seen homes that everything, and I mean everything is taken out of the house except the paint on the walls. And when I say everything, I mean the wiring, the plumbing, shelves, cupboards, toilets, sinks, bathtubs I just don't know what you do with a bathtub I, I you know I don't know if there's a market for that you know the, the the plastic lining I mean everything is gone so the homes need to be inspected quite often if you go into the neighborhood I live you'll see homes being rented to university students there will be three four five six students in a two or three bedroom home, which has not been grandfathered in. Some properties are grandfathered in, in the Mott Park area, where they can have more than two non-related individuals living in the home. In other homes, which have not been grandfathered in, there are more than two unrelated people living in the homes. Cars are parked in the backyards. Cars are parked between the house and the curb, uh, house and the sidewalk, between the sidewalk and the curb. They're parked on the wrong side of the street. They're facing the wrong way. They're parked on the no parking side of the street. And it's a constant problem. It's a safety issue. So I believe inspections should be done, not just something that's on the books. I do not believe that tenants most tenants know the building codes, know what exactly needs to be required in the home they live. Furthermore, many tenants will put up with the, the substandard housing, and they do this for many reasons, because the landlord is willing to take less rent than he or she would collect if the home were fixed up, because to fix the home up, it w would not be economically feasible. So they will allow plumbing to, to drip, and the tenant will put the buckets underneath the sink in the kitchen. We've seen it at the Board of Review to catch the water and then dump it outside. So the landlord's willing to take less money the tenant is willing to live in that substandard housing because they're paying less. And it brings down the value of the good homes in the community that could be rented out because the good landlord, the responsible landlord, has now, has now have to ask for less money in order to attract tenants because the tenants are willing to live in the lower rented substandard house. If we can get rid of the substandard housing, tenants would live in a better house, the community would be better off, and those who are responsible landlords would increase their profit. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? 
Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. Okay, that concludes our public hearings for this evening. That brings us to um, our public speaker portion of the meeting. I will um, call your name and ask you to come to the microphone. Just give us your name for the record. We have your uh, slip on file. Please limit your comments to five minutes and refrain from any personal attacks on individuals or institutions. First to be called this evening, uh, Robert Johnson, Mr. Robert Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Kincaid. I've been coming to this council meeting for Please give us your name. That's Robert Johnson. Thank you. Um, I've been com I'm coming to the council meeting since 19 or 2008. Um, you all know what I've come here for in 2008 was the homicide of my brother and the failure of the police department to arrest the two people that, that did that investigation. Over the years, I wanted to know why they didn't do it, and so I got looking into you guys' money, in which you guys all heard this little spiel before. So I'll just sort of brief it. And I found that the, the police department didn't have the money for this, and people were retiring to get the heck out because they were getting cuts, and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And so it made it so that the officers I mean, during the, during the Williamson administration, they went through and they cut police officers and they cut the fire department and, and then they went and demoted officers and they demoted, you know, people. Any way they could cut their salary, their moral being, any way they, you know, they could demean these officers that protected the people, they did. And then Walling come in and lied to them Walling come in and said, hey, you know, I'm going to support our police departments. He got the, the police unions to back him 100%. And we have video of that. And he took and uh, did the same thing that uh, Williamson did. Started cutting the police departments and made their morality just go to the ground, just dogged them in the ground. And then sat there and said, oh, well, they won't talk to us. You know, the union won't speak with us. The union won't do this with us. When the union would sit there and post, you know, what they've offered, and Walling, you know, on, on Channel 12, they, they even caught Walling in one of that, because one of them things, and which was an unusual moment for Channel 12 because they don't tell us the truth about anything. But they caught him saying, well, they won't come to us, and then they played the union representative that said, well, we offered him this, and we sat there for several hours, and we had a good time um, discussing this stuff. And then Walling said, well, they won't come to She says, which is it? And he says, well, we have talked. And, you know, so they uncovered, you know, that Walling wasn't doing his job, and then he was lying to the people. Now, I've come to this board meeting and asked you guys to step in on several occasions on different things. Um, I've had investigations done and I have yelled and screamed and rant and raved and not once has anything ever been done on anything. I have paperwork on paperwork and I do not do anything without paperwork. I do not accuse nobody without paperwork. Everything that I do was to get the justice for my brother. But then I found out that the city of Flint don't care about justice. They don't care about the people in, in, in their area. You guys were hired, you were elected to care for us. When we put you in these offices, doesn't matter what we are right or wrong, you are to come out and you are to say, hey, you know, they did you wrong. And we're going to fix this. Now, in my particular case, 
they did come out and say they did it wrong. They took me on the news and they said they did it wrong. And they said that they were going to reopen that case back in 2009. That case to this day has not been reopened. And we know who murdered him. But that case has not been reopened since 2009. Now, 2008, half of the homicides were solved. 2009, three quarters of them were unsolved. 2010, three quarters. I mean, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I am tired of coming here, but I'm going to continue to come here until we start doing something for these people. I have had mothers come to me and say, Bobby Johnson, the, the David Layton won't do Well, you guys can't control what David Layton does. However, you can have requests. I ask that, that you guys file complaints against David Layton for, for violating our constitutional rights. Mr. Johnson, you've exceeded your five minutes. Please sum can up. I have a couple of more minutes, please? Sum up, please. My purpose here, we have an election coming up this year and then next year. I would ask that the people do not vote for Mr. Mr. Kildee, for he has ruined the city of Flint with the land bank. Anybody in the neighborhoods can look around and see that the land bank has destroyed the city of Flint, and Mr. Kildee was the one that did that. I would also ask that the people vote for Mr. Davenport because I don't like the Republican candidate. I would also ask that the people of Flint start looking at all their candidates and start holding them accountable for the stuff that's been going on for years and years and years. The money that has been disappearing and then we get charged extra fees for that. Um, I'm tired and I moved into the city. Everybody else was running. I moved into the city to fight this. And I, I will not, and I, I ask the people not to vote for, for people that continue to do this. And I will be posting a list on my Facebook of who I don't like. And I hope that all the citizens look at it and say they won't vote for them. And, and Mr. Kildee is one of the worst as far as the land bank tore the city of Flint apart. And I wish you guys would step in and take the houses back from the land bank. I don't know if you can do it, but it needs to be done. These properties need to be taken back and gone to the people. I mean, you guys could have sold it for a dollar like they used to. Mr. Johnson. And we would have had I, these. I ask you to please sum up. I'm, I'm trying to. That's why I asked for a couple well, more I'm minutes. Gonna, I'm going to make you sum up. Okay. You know, thank you. There's other speakers that want to speak tonight. You know what? This place is half empty, and, and it's not. Well, we all respect but, each other. And I, I respect that, Mr. Kincaid. But I'm, I'm tired of the city of Flint telling me to shut up. You go downstairs. You ask me to go downstairs and ask him to open up an office. You cannot get a meeting with none of them emergency managers down there. Not one. Remember that in November. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening is Vanetta Washington. Mrs. Washington. Uh, my name is Vanita Washington Simmons. And uh, I'm going to pretty stay too much, pretty stellar from where I was before. I'm a grandmother of six and a great grandmother of two. I've been in this city all my life, and I'm not here to bash anybody. My concern is for our community. We're coming from ashes to ashes to dust to dust. And this doesn't take from what I feel financial, it takes people moving. You know, and no one can say that better than myself because I lived off an income of nothing from April to September and I got it done. So this is not about money. This is about caring. Our community is rotting. It's literally rotting. And it's not about us putting you into office because I'm quite sure you got agendas. But I would really wish that you would take the time, uh, whoever that, where, wherever you're a council person in that particular community, to come down, look at your community, look around, because you actually have the asset 
to make things happen, to write the grants, to do the movement, to maybe get a staff or people, volunteers who will assist you to rebuild our communities from the ground up. It's very, very frightening when you see four or five generations who lived in an area and elderly who they're shooting, they're robbing. We got all these vacant houses. Who's ever responsible for them? Whether, whether it's the land bank, whether it's the, uh, the, the landlord who's there. Make them board them up. Make them, make them clean up everything. You know, I have two, I have six wonderful grandchildren, but I actually have two that are two males, black males, who the odds are against them. But I've got a 14-year-old at the University of, of, of Michigan through the uh, Genesee Early College program, and I've got one 13 from Gear Up who was profiled for Central Michigan, Michigan University. I want my children to grow in Flint. It's not about money. It's about us coming together, not pointing fingers. You know, let's just get it done. Tell us, you know, you're our leaders. Tell us what we need to do. Do a city cry. You would be surprised at the silent warriors that would come out of their houses and assist you for nothing. But when we look around and there's nobody there and we got houses falling down and our babies walk past these houses. My, my grandson goes to school at 6.30 in the morning. He has to walk from uh, 209 East Velasquez all the way to uh, Saginaw Street to catch the bus to U of M. In between that, anybody is in there. I want whoever is responsible for that property to be held accountable. So I implore you, and I'm actually pleading with the council to please help us in the community because there are some people there, many, that will come to your cry. We just really, because we don't know what to do. You're our leaders. Lead us. Show us what we need to do, and we'll step with you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening is Carolyn Shannon. Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn Shannon, to the Honorable President Scott Kincaid, to the Honorable Vice President Dale Wayhill, and to the Honorable Council, I stand before you as a citizen of Flint, and I feel what is happening to these two young ladies, and I welcome them back to the City Council meeting. The thing about the City of Flint is we had multiple people here at the last council meeting for the master plan. Car Carolyn, push the button. I think you accidentally hit it. Yeah. No, try it one more time. There you go. We had go. multiple people here for the master plan. And what I call, what I heard, was goobly gobbly. It was Mitt Romney. I did not hear anything in that master plan that was inclusive. My neighborhood, your neighborhood, everybody's neighborhood. You have to know the city of Flint. Those young people, when this city collapsed, they were not even born. So I think you need not pay somebody just to be paying somebody, like the managers and, we don't need that. We need our people that we know to get paychecks. If we need help, We'll call you. We do not want anyone in our city that packs up and leave every weekend. 
I am very upset that they took my boat away from me. I made a distinct decision to vote and work very diligently for Dane Wally and his administration. I don't like what's going on in this city. First of all, these managers should be getting police protection for our city. The next thing they need to do is get money to travel, to have companies come to our city. We have a lot of brown fields that need to be cleaned up and taken care of, especially the brown field in my neighborhood on Davidson and Dort. It's becoming a jungle and it is an eyesore. I want that cleaned up and I'm very proud of the two young women that came here today to try to let you know that they're having problems in their neighborhood. And the young lady that chose to come back to Flint, I think you should engage her in community affairs. The thing I don't like about what's going on in the city of Flint, especially the master plan, I'm not included. You're not included. You're not included. The audience is not included. Is this a master plan that was already planned? What I'm saying to you, we've got to have some checks and balances on this city. On everything that goes on in this city has to be checked and balanced. We can't just throw a lot of things up on the wall, like Mitt Romney. He hasn't told him us his plan. He's got a plan. The Republicans have always had a plan, but are they telling us what it is? Now, I want to thank Ms. Popular for looking into my water bill, which was $411.06. An inspector did come by and he said, I got a, just a, a, a small leak, even though I got everything cut off. I got us, because I don't have to use all the, everything in my house. It's just a small shape. Okay, it's not a gush. It shouldn't be 400 from 115 to $411.06. Carolyn, you're five minutes. Please oh, sum up. Okay. Thank you. Well, again, thank you, Ms. Poplar, for looking into that for me. And I really want these young ladies to know that we do care about the city of Flint. And another thing, uh, Dan Kildee has always been a respectable man and has always respected me. He told me and Mrs. James in his office, if we do not own that land across from Doyle Ryder School, he will buy it back. And it is supposed to be for the arts. And I still want the deed to be given to my council person, Mr. Dale Wayhill, so he can give it to me and I'll give it to Mr. Charles Winfrey. The theater has been in existence for over 30 years, and I've been there, my children grew up there, and I want a state-of-the-art building. We deserve it. I enjoy going to the Flint Institute of Arts. I enjoy going to Bauer Theater. I enjoy going to the Flint Institute of Music. Why? Because it is inviting. So I ask you, please work on the Saginaw side and the Chippewa side. That is part of the master plan that I see. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Mr. President. Jackie. Um, 
Ms. Ms. Parker. <laughs> it's okay, Scott. Um, Ms. Shannon, you mentioned that um, you were not involved in the master plan. Every citizen in the city of Flint can be involved in the master plan. We are looking for citizens all over this city in each ward to sit on subcommittees for the master plan. So all you have to do is get your dates and show up. Um, I do believe next on the 16th, Mr. Nolan, Tuesday the 16th, you're welcome. Also, the two ladies that want to be involved, you're welcome to come to the Flint Institute of Art, Flint Institute of Art at 5.30 and tell which ward you live in. You can be a representative for that ward and voice your opinions. They're writing everything down and they're taking notes. You can even hold a subcommittee meeting in your ward if you'd like to. They have um, um, at home. Do, do it yourself box. What are they called? Do it yourself kits. Do you do it yourself kits? Where you can maybe get the people on your street if they don't want to come to an actual meeting, you can hold a meeting yourself and get their ideas and then bring them back. So everybody in this city is involved in the master plan. Councilman Nolan and myself, we both sit on the steering committee of the master plan. And we were a part of the logo that was chosen. Imagine Flint. And I got something else to go with Imagine Flint. <laughs> so please, uh, you know, if you need any more information, you can see me after the meeting. But we'd love to see you out there and love to see you represent your ward and get on one of those committees. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, and, and just to add to that, um, we, are, we are really looking for people in each one of the wards to be active and involved with it. And I know I spoke with you earlier today, Gladys, and, I'm, and I gave you the number, and I know you, you called. So I do appreciate that. But this is a way that we have a voice as we move forward with this new master plan, because if we're not at the table, we can't blame anybody but ourselves, because they are really open. Um, in terms of having people be, be real active with this because it's what you guys want to see the city like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line because we haven't had a comprehensive master plan in the city of Flint since 1960. So this is our opportunity to have a voice as we move forward. So I'm really um, asking anyone that is interested, please show up at 5.30 on next Tuesday at the Flint um, um, Institute of Art and they actually... Um, are going to kind of talk about each one of the um, subcommittees, and I think it's either five or six different subcommittees that you that you can fall under, and it's um, and it's a wide array of different things. So um, we have people on the waiting list because we want to make sure that we have residents of the city of Flint on the um, advisory groups first. But we have a lot of people that don't live in the city of Flint that are anxious to get on these committees. So if you are interested, please make sure that you call um, the planning, uh, master planning um, office. And I, I don't remember the number, but. They can call City, City Hall, Hall and, City ask, Hall and ask, ask for Megan. Yeah, ask for Megan ask Hunter. For Megan. And then once you do that, then you know, she'll give you a, the idea of which, what are the committees. And then you can pick where you want to work within. And what we're doing, each one of the um, subcommittees or advisory groups have a 21 member um, advisory. advisory group, mm -hmm. yep. and we want to make sure that we have at least two to three members from each ward on it before we bring people from outside. So that's one thing that we're really pushing. So I'm hoping that um, you guys that want to get involved will get involved with that because you know if, if we if we sit back and, and be idled, whatever happens, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. President. Yes, Councilman. Yes, uh, Carolyn, also you had mentioned that um, Mr. Kildee was interested in purchasing back uh, that land across from Doyle Ryder for the development project of the uh, Urban Arts Center. And I'm in full support of that Urban Arts Center. Uh, there, there were some discussions uh, when Mr. Eason was in, 
was in position as city administrator and uh, the Smith Village plan of that urban art center, but there's no more discussions that are occurring to my knowledge about that. Um, but that property is privately owned, and I can share with you uh, uh, who owns that property, and if uh, and he is willing to sell. So if uh, Mr. Kildee is wanting to purchase that for that development, uh, and uh, you got his support on that. I would be glad to share that information with you. Thank you. He shared this information with me and Mr. Billy James in his office when he was in the land bank. So I would appreciate any effort. Okay. I can share with you who owns that property. And you can share then with him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker this evening is Mr. R. R. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. My name is R. R. Mitchell and uh, Scott, you said refrain from personal attacks. But Flint is a high style city. Uh, it's a, uh, thanks to Ms. Poplar in here now, she be saying, uh, imagine Flint with that uh, master plan stuff. I'm, I, w I worked at General, that truck assembly over on Van Slack Road for six years without a vacation. And you know that I, what it'll do to you, man, work for six years without a vacation and threaten I'm going to lose my job if I take the a, a day off. And I've been, I end up in the streets because the co committee man told, they gave me a vacation without where I'm least respect. But I went home to my, to my wife, but she wasn't there. And I've been in the street ever since. I've been 78, and I've been in the street ever since then. That's a family man, but I've been coming down here ever since the, the change of the Berlin in 1999, 1999 when Rip Rose, former Rip Rose Stanley was rebuilding the whole, the whole Flint until you people's, you was here, you, was, you, you still here, but these newcomers right here, and uh, and and he just he you didn't kick him out. He volunteered left because the people of Flint. He went up, but he went in Lansing. And I was, and ever since then, I've been my hangout place is over on Pulaski Street, where this lady would come out. She just she was talking about from the other street they be breaking in. And uh, man, time don't wait on nobody. And he, you told me don't mention the inspector name of the, the little house I was living in. But I was a personal attack by Bob Russell. And y'all, he told me something about black mold. He said, man, you can get killed up in there living in. I said, I just made myself hanging out. I rather, I feel safer in the streets hanging out on, over, the, over on, uh, on Lee Street at the store. While well, them killings, people's getting killed for no reason. I'm the only one standing up there, bullets flying everywhere. And stuff and nobody, and all this stupid stuff. You wonder what come I ain't running. And, uh, and he was doing a good job until y'all talking about where the money was. Him and that Williams fellow over on Miller Road with his car selling, selling stuff. I was going his wife was gonna give me a car, but I didn't want him to take it out on on, uh, on Daryl Buchanan and stuff like that. I was trying to, oh, that's the person in the attack too. I see how she got swallowing her throat that properly looking over here, madam. But anyway, man, I wanted, I come up here to say, Man, that General Motors stuff up, uh, I was a, uh, then my, I had a concerned lawyer, she, she helped me to get some, some money from General Motors, but they don't allow her to tell me what's, what's up. Now I want my Social Security. But now you're talking about this change, this voting stuff. It get worse and worse. And she talking about uh, that imagination that every, I be sitting down minding my own business. She might be able to talk about the temptation, just my next imagination running to get away with me again and all that stuff, stoop, see what happened to them. And I'm thinking on my, my wife and family. I'm a family man. Every time I sit down and whoever come with that imagine stuff, that's some phony stuff. The work about Stanley, all the, I mean, you know, the stupid junk. I be sitting down at McDonald's and came and Got to get beat up by some senior citizen talking about ain't nobody in here but kids and old people. What you do? I mean, I was, they just told me to leave because the dude don't, well, her son got 
I was, I, I, refused, I was gonna take that dude. I don't know what I was gonna do. Like I done the General Motors over to my friend. Man, no, man, you, uh, Roger and me selling, giving out free turkeys. I, was, I thought Roger was gonna do something about this General Motors stuff. He just, yeah, he took the whole beard out. He told me just, he got this. But my plant, still up, Gen truck assembly still up. Man, but, man, I, man, I can go on, but you up there with that smirk on your face look like, beam him up, Scotty. I'm gonna say it now. Thank you, RL. Hey, um, Scott. Thank you, RL. Uh, um, Councilman Nolan. Just, just one other thing. Um, I happen to have um, the five advisory groups so I just wanted to um, let you guys know, so if you are interested in um, sitting on one. The first one is public safety, health, and welfare. The other one, the second one is open space, natural resources, and conservation. Third is housing. The fourth one is economic development and education. And the last one is um, transportation and mobility. And those are the five different uh, um, advisory groups. Once again, transportation and mobility economic development and education, housing, open space, natural resources and conservation, and public <coughs> safety, health and welfare. Although um, the public safety, health and welfare, they were talking about possibly I'm splitting sorry. that up because it's so, so large and public safety just be one off by itself. And then health and welfare would be another separate one. So that will probably be addressed on Tuesday at 5.30 over at the Flint Institute of Art. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nolan. Our uh, last speaker this evening is Ms. Shirley Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Taylor. God bless America. And God bless every last one of us. I love you all, and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I'm happy that me you too. love me, Shirley, because we love Such you. A ain't a thing you can do about it. <clears throat> I rose this evening to talk about all of these cold case files. We have good policemen that have retired. <laughs> When we had supervisors that retired, engineers retired from General Motors, a lot of them came back under contract to train other people. Some of these good police could be brought back to stop some of this crime here in Flint. We have almost 60 people and got killed this year. Just bodies on top of bodies. When my children were killed, it was brightest day. Who killed them? I proved who killed them by working with the Department of Justice, the FBI, my neighbors, Seven families called about these stalkers sitting in our neighborhood. In fact, they, one is dead and the other one is in prison for the attempted murder of two other people and they didn't die. They live to testify against them. And to show you how Satan works, I tell you, he's busy. Satan is busy, but he'll have to answer to the Lord too. Wouldn't you think so? One of these young fellas came from a home with a mother and a father 
that were Christian people, they were evangelists. My son sat on the back of his lawnmower truck and tutored this boy's two sisters and a lot of other kids at lunchtime. And when his little niece was killed, I went to the funeral and spoke. That fella almost knocked me down. I told people, I said, Bone Scandalous was one of the people that killed my children. Wanda and most of the people from family of murdered children were almost afraid to go in the church. And I spoke, and Bone Scandalous had my son's watch on that I had given him for June for his birthday. Now you know if you buy somebody a watch, have it engraved and see your neighbor sitting there with it on, you know it, don't you? Seven families called 911. I went to the police station, took them the description, license plate, everything about those vehicles. And one of the people that was driving one was Bobby Younger. He's in prison, but not for the murders of killing my children. And then back to why I, I got up here. I, I, I'm hurt with the school system. This jail is full of young people that have been kicked out of school. Now, when a child is kicked out of school, if you're having problems, you get kicked out of school when you come back. You behind. Shirley, your five minutes are up. Would you please sum up? Okay, 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 I will. Yep, thank you. Children, the teachers need to be working with the parents. You can expect those teachers to raise your children. They need to work with, your, with the parents and don't allow no child to fail because we don't need, we need to be building schools, not jails. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Okay, that completes our speakers for this evening. We have no resolutions, but we have a number of appointments, and since the clerk isn't here, I will read the appointments and then... Um, Mr. Chair, would it yes. be appropriate to just do them in groups, so like the Planning Commission, Building Authority, and then Board of Managers? If there's a number of appointments for the Planning Commission that are from each individual ward, I would just like each council representative from that ward to make a recommendation on their reappointment, if that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with Council... Um, Word two, Jackie. Thank you, Mr. President. I approve uh, and recommend the appointment of Patrick Rouse. He has worked very diligently on this board along with Flint Park Lake CDC, which was dismissed by um, emergency manager Farrell Brown. And these are reappointments to the Flint Planning Commission for everyone? I'll support that. C Councilman uh, Nolden, your appointment? Um, I definitely will um, support um, Ms. Campbell to be back on the Planning Commission. She's done a wonderful job. Okay. Uh, Ward 1's reappointment isn't here. Uh, David Jackson, um, I know Councilman Lloyd um, approved of that. Does someone want to recommend his? I'll move it, Mr. President. Support. Okay. That one's been moved. Ward? Huh? We're going to do them all in a group anyway. Okay. Um, Word five. Yes, I. Uh, Councilman Lawler. I definitely approve and support um, 
the reappointment of Res uh, Robert Wesley okay. uh, to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Um, Councilman uh, Neely on Ward 6. Yeah, I approve of the reappointment of Robert Jewell. Okay. And then if someone um, would move mine, I would also appreciate that. I move um, approval for Elizabeth Jordan, Ward 9. Thank you. So a motion to move all of the appointments to the Planning Commission for reappointments would be in order? So, so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll? Janelle? Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. That's okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, oh. Councilman I'd Freeman. 1017 and 1018 for support. Approval. 1017 and 1018 have been moved and supported. They are the appointments, I'm sorry, they are the reappointments to the Flint Hospital Building Authority. One would be Charlotte Edwards, which is 121018, and Ira Rutherford is 121017. They've been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. The vote is 8-0. Eight eight I'm sorry, 8-0. And that was the vote on the last one. I should have said that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Next, we have Ms. reappointment to the Board of Hospital Managers. I'll move the approval of all three. Um, Jesse Collins, Charlotte Edwards, and Bryant Nolan. Support. <laughs> the the uh, reappointments, um, let's do the reappointments first. The reappointments would be for Jesse Collins and Charlotte Edwards. They've been moved and supported. Support. Yeah. <laughs> Roll. Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. The vote is 8 to 0. And then on the last appointment is the appointment of Brian Nolan uh, to fill the positions, the physician's position that was vacated by Dr. McComala. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? No. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know this. I, I'm not the Brian Nolan that's on there. <laughs> Roll, Janelle. Well, question. Oh, question. I'm sorry, Councilman yeah. Neely. Yeah, I, I do. I do. Uh, I don't have a problem with these appointments and reappointments to the Hurley Board of Managers, but I do want to clarify and to make a request to make sure that all of the uh, appointees and reappointees are within the guidelines of the residential requirement. Uh, I know we do have, uh, I think it's 12 of the appointments that are required by charter that have resident requirements. I think three uh, are out county area appointments uh, that can qualify, but I do want to, uh, for us to take the time, uh, not at this date, but to make sure that all requirements pursuant to charter of the city of Flint, that these uh, reappointments and appointments are within those guidelines. And I can, and I can just kind of, um, verified that all the reappointments that we did tonight were City of Flint, uh, City of Flint resident, and the reappointment is to fill the um, vacant position that was held by Dr. McComala, who was not a city resident at that time that he resigned, and so this is just to fill the remaining term of Dr. McComala's appointment right. um, by Dr. Nolan. So it's right. been moved and supported. And may I also say? Huh? Yeah. We received these very late, and uh, Ms. Brown will check them. Right. Yeah. It, it's not just to check the, these appointments and reappointments, no. Scott, it, but to the, all of them, the, right? the, the whole, the, the board in this, in this totality. I, I agree with that, Councilman Neely. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Roll. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes. The 
vote is eight to zero. Okay, that concludes the appointments. We now have ordinance for, we have no ordinances for first reading. I don't Ms. believe. Mr. Chair, I move uh, no, 120958 for second reading. Support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll, Janelle. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. The vote is eight to zero. Okay, that concludes our business. Are there any council persons wishing yes. to speak at this yes. time? Yes, Mr. Kincaid. Yes. Come yeah. Ahead. Really? Yeah, I do want to address some of the concerns of some of the speakers that spoke this evening. Even though the, the crowd is, is light, but all concerns are very important. I did take some notes here. Uh, I do want to express uh, my concern as well as all the residents that spoke tonight and their concern. But as you can see that uh, my colleagues and myself, I can't speak for all of them, but we, we do have some frustration. Uh, the emergency manager and this administration has gone out of their way to ignore you by way of us. You can see we have no city attorney sitting here. We have no department heads in here uh, to answer or address the concerns of the public at large. Uh, we were elected to represent you all, uh, and our request for information has gone unanswered. Um, and it's many, many frustrations uh, that we share as, as well as the public here. Uh, the city of Flint has not seen this type of oppression in the 21st century. It's unprecedented, the type of oppression. In my opinion, uh, what is going on is the administration or, and or the emergency managers are systematically dissolving the city of Flint. There's areas in this community that are going um, unserved. We have blighted areas, we have crime, and you can't tell me these things are, are, are not being addressed, are being addressed effectively. You know, the question one of the speakers asked today, they asked, you know, we're looking for guidance from our elected leaders. We're looking for guidance. You know, we have to really focus on what's next. Where's this community going? Are we broke? No, we're not broke. We don't have a lot of money, but a budget is nothing more than a snapshot of our priorities. Where are our priorities? You know, some can say that we can try to pray these things away, or vote these things away, or try to have a legal redress, but this emergency manager or managers have gone out of their way to ignore us and ignore the law. We now have Mike Brown who's making $170,000, which is $76,000 over the legal limit of making money. He lives in Lansing. He takes his check back home to Lansing. We have Barnett Jones, which makes $135,000, and I'm unsure because his position is a new position to the city of Flint. These six-figure salaries were not in uh, the city budget before. Jerry Ambrose, who makes $129,000, which lives in Lansing. And I said Barnett Jones, but he lives in Ann Arbor. Ed Kurtz does not live in Flint, and his, his wage is, I'm not sure about his wage. But these six-figure salaries for people who do not reside in this community bring about some pause and some concern. This council body has taken our, our, did, our, did our best and our due diligence to try to find legal ways to stop them and some of the things that they're trying to put forth to bring about some peace and, and some quality of life things for our residents. Residents are worried about these abandoned structures in our neighborhoods as we worry about children traveling to and from school in front of these structures. These hollowed out homes, or used to be homes. We definitely have to do something about these absentee property owners. And I wanna say absentee property owners. We have to beef up the way that we go about trying to uh, forfeit these properties so we can get them on a demolition list. But then the conversation has to go further. Once they demo a property, what happens to that property? Because if something's demoed and wiped away, they're just gonna ignore that part of the city. 
we're going to have some challenges in the future. We're going to have some challenges with our water issues and our public safety issues. But the question was forwarded by, by a resident today, what's next? We have to work and wait, work and wait. We just cannot sit back and wait, but we have to work. And we have to stick together and, 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 and try to do whatever we can. They're going to try to ignore us, but some of us will not be ignored. And we still have a legal challenge. I do want to update the co my council colleagues as it relates to the lawsuit for uh, declaratory judgment. Uh, the city attorney has not responded to uh, the attorney that is representing us on that issue, but, but the state has, has responded. And so therefore, we're going to be uh, fighting against the state on this issue. But while we work and wait, we must get to the polls on November 6th to abolish some of these, these unrighteous, unlawful um, laws that they put forward to do some of these things to us. But I'll digress, uh, Mr. President, um, and let some of my other colleagues speak to this. But I did not want to not address some of the speakers that spoke here tonight. I do want to, I do want you to know that some of us heard you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Mr. Uh, President, just for the record. Councilwoman Poplar. Just, just for the record. Okay. I was in a meeting with uh, Mr. Ed Kurtz, and. I do know that we've had people come down here and we've done referral after referral after referral and they want to know why they can't get any answers on their referrals. So just for the record, I was told by Mr. Kurtz that he would not respond to any questions that had anything to do with the finances of this city. So I politely got up out of my seat and that was the end of the conversation with me and Mr. Kurtz because I refused to meet with anyone that can't meet with us, the council, and the constituents and give us some answers. Mr. Kurtz is the one that's pulling the pocketbook strings. Mr. Kurtz is the one with the 30 pieces of silver. Mr. Kurtz, but he can't tell us how he's spending the 30 pieces of silver. So I politely got up. So with Mr. Kurtz, at the helm of things, we probably won't get the answers that we are all looking for, because he's only going to feed us what he wants us to have. And we're not little puppies, nor are we little children, little babies. That we are not. So let it be known, Mr. Kurtz, if you see this somewhere out in space, I said it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Councilman Nolan. Yeah, um, just to some of the comments that were um, stated earlier, um, if you can't get a hold um, to the RICO and, you know, he, he might have some things that he might be dealing with, um, you can also get a hold to me and I can see what I can do because um, a lot of times I can go to not the people in charge, but you build relationships with people in certain departments and sometimes you can get things done. You know, and that's, that's how I kind of work. So um, I can give you my number when this is over with, and um, we can see what we can do. Because um, it's always a way around certain things. You know, you even have um, community groups out in the community that will come, and if you're talking about some abandoned houses that need to be boarded up, there's some, there's some groups around here that will come out and do it. So um, when this is over with, I'll give you my number, and um, you can call me. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, thank you. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. I do know that there is a get out to vote rally at um, House of Prayer tonight. Uh, at started at six o'clock, so uh, that's probably where a lot of uh, residents are. Uh, that was, you know, here last uh, a few weeks ago when we met and 
uh, that are not here today. But I want to thank you all for being here. Um, and I do concur what Councilman Neely was saying about there are council people on this council that really do care and do hear, you know, what you're saying. And, and, is, and we're very frustrated in uh, some of the uh, powers that we have right now. And, and then by some way of our referrals, as uh, Councilwoman Poplar has stated, has fallen on deaf ears or, uh, you know, no actions or no responses to the referrals that we've made about the concerns that you, the residents, bring to us. We do take actions on those uh, concerns that you have, but because of the dictatorship position that we, ha we have this, the city in now with the emergency manager, um, that is, to me, our biggest, our biggest issue right now is getting uh, to repealing that law on November 6th, uh, getting folks out to vote, and encouraging people to, uh, to repeal that law. And um, there's other things on the ballot that really greatly concern the residents of the city of Flint. I don't support the uh, public safety millage that uh, this administration is trying to, uh, to get approved because I believe there's been a lot of mismanagement with this administration where if it was managed right, you wouldn't have to put more tax burden on the residents to pay for more police officers. But if we, didn't, if we weren't paying, for example, uh, $170,000 plus $70,000 to a city administrator, that could pay for a, uh, a couple of officers you know, to be uh, on the streets. Um, but if it was managed well, we could easily have 10 more officers on the street. So. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of game playing right now and scare tactics that is being used for the residents of the city of Flint to, to pass that. Uh, but I encourage you not to fall into that and uh, continue to fight to get back control of our city. So um, come November 6th, we all must get out the importance of getting out to vote and repealing that, uh, that public act for law. Okay. Anyone else? I would just like to make the comment, and I've been encouraging um, wherever I go, uh, groups of people and individuals, that this ballot this year is uh, extremely long. And no telling what the weather is going to be this year uh, during the election, being a presidential election. There's always a lot higher turnout. I am encouraging everyone that I can to fill out an absentee ballot request form, have the ballot mailed to your home, fill it out in the convenience of your home, seal it, sign it, and mail it back to the city. And that way uh, you won't have to go to the polls and you won't have to stand in line for long periods of time. You can get absentee ballot request forms a lot of different places in the community. You can get them right here at City Hall. A lot of the churches have them. A lot of uh, other organizations have them. I know council members have, have had them and have been passing them out. So I would encourage, and I am encouraging everyone, uh, to please take the time and fill out an absentee ballot request, particularly this year, because this election is so long. important. I wouldn't want anyone to get discouraged standing in a long line waiting to vote. So with that, um, our next council meeting, Councilman Sargent. Well, that's what I was, good point, that's what I was going to say. We need to get on the absentee ballots if you've never done it before. This is the election to do it because it's going to be long lines. Uh, there's, how many is there, six? There's two, two ballots, four pages. Yes. And, and the clerk says it takes it would, about... 15 minutes to go through the ballot and fill it out, so. It's much easier in the comfort of your own home if you fill out an absentee ballot. It definitely save you a lot of time and cold. <laughs> and, it, and it's free to send back. We're the only municipality in the state of Michigan that provides the return postage for it, so it doesn't, right. nothing out of your pocket. Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for October 22nd at 5.30. We are adjourned, and thank you all for coming this evening.